be here till the end of time So you got to let me know Should I stay or should I go? 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 and welcome back to my channel. Today I have another fandom themed DIY video for you. I am on a roll at the moment with the DIY videos and I think that deserves a great big thumbs up from you guys. So hit that thumbs up button down below and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more fandom related DIY content. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Today, in honor of Stranger Things season two being released on Netflix really soon, we are doing Stranger Things inspired DIYs. So without further ado, let's get into the video. First up, we are making waffle scented candles. That so for this, you're going to need some soy wax, some long candle wicks, some vanilla spice scented candle oil, which I will link to down below, and a mason jar. First of all, you want to put a wick into your mason jar and, and make sure it stays in the middle by using a little bit of sellotape just to hold it in place. Next, fill a pan up with some boiling water, set a glass measuring jug inside it, add in your wax and your candle oil and stir until melted. Once it's completely melted, you can pour it into your mason jar and leave it in the fridge to cool down and set. Once it's set, it should look something like this and you can use some puffer paint to start to draw on your design onto your mason jar. So I'm drawing the infamous Stranger Things fairy lights. So I love the way that this looks with the puffer paint, it just makes it look a bit more professional and adds a bit of something to the mason jar. Once you've drawn out your design you want to get a load of coloured sharpies and just colour in your fairy lights in the colours that you see in Winona Ryder's front room. And you should have something that looks like this once you're all done. Then you're ready to snip down your wick and display your candle, light it, fill up your room with the delicious scent of Eggo waffles. I am obsessed. This smells so, so good. Next up, we are creating some retro 80s pin badges. I found these designs on Pinterest and printed them out seven times bigger than I wanted my pin badges to be. Next, you're gonna need some shrinky paper and just lay your shrinky paper over the top of your printed designs. Using Sharpies in the same color as the designs, you just want to trace out the design onto your shrinky dink paper and don't forget to colour it in. This is what mine looked like once I traced out my designs. I love these, especially the should I stay or should I go cassette tape. Then you want to take some scissors and just carefully cut around the edge of your design, making sure not to leave any sharp edges. Once they're all cut out, you're ready to put them in the oven and shrink them down. I'm using some tin foil to lay my badges onto and you want to pop them in the oven for about three or four minutes. What they're gonna do is they're gonna start curling up and shrinking, but you only wanna take them out of the oven once they start to lie flat. As soon as they're out of the oven, you need to find something heavy and flat to flatten the badges down with before they have a chance to cool. Be careful at this part because I actually ended up cracking my Ego waffle pin badge, which I'm still really sad about. But here are my two pin badges that I did manage to successfully make and I love them. So what I'm doing here is using some purpley grey acrylic paint to paint the back of my designs just so that the designs stand out a bit better. And once that was dry I just went ahead and grabbed some safety pins and these are what we're going to use to make the badge part of the badge. So I just put some hot glue onto the back of my designs and then carefully put the safety pins on the back of the badges. Make sure they're the right way round and also make sure that you glue them down with the safety pin open. And these are what my finished designs look like. I think they're adorable. They're so cute and you could make so many of these. Perfect to give out to your guests at a Stranger Things viewing party. Next we're making some wall art that Joyce Bowers would be proud of. So first of all you're going to need a frame and then you're going to need to print out some of the Byers family's wallpaper. Now I found this on the internet and and I will link to where you can download it down below. But make sure you print it out to fit the size of your frame. Next, you're gonna need some Christmas lights in the classic primary colors that Joyce Byers has in her living room. And you want to lay these out in two rows across your sheet, just to kind of mark out where you want the lights to be. 
then using black acrylic paint and a guide on the internet to work out what Joyce's handwriting look like, you're going to want to write out your phrase. So I'm writing Amy's room because I thought it would be quite nice to have a little sign for my bedroom that was Stranger Things inspired and I'm just using the brush to make some like drip marks and things like that to make it look a bit more rushed and hurried and frantic. Then you want to take the clear plastic off your frame, lay that over the top of your design and also you're going to need to take the back of the frame as well. Just sort of slot it all together and get it all set up and then you can start wrapping your fairy lights around the whole thing. Make sure that your light bulbs line up with the letters of your design and then you want to start hot gluing it into place. Be careful not to put the hot glue on the bulbs themselves. Once they're all glued down, you can put them back into the frame and slot the whole thing together. And then you can take the battery pack and glue it to the back of the frame so it's hidden and out of the way but still accessible if you want to turn on your design. And here you have it, here is my little Stranger Things room decor piece which I absolutely love, I think it's really cool. You could do this for so many different designs as well, like you could do it for gifts for friends or anything, but look how cool it looks. I'm ready to contact the upside down. And that is it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to see more from me. And I will see you in my next video. Until then, stay spooky.